it's been so long and um yeah hi so the reason why i haven't posting i'm gonna go straight to the point we moved as you can see different background different things so anyway so we moved and that's the reason why we weren't able to film but now we're back and we're gonna film the first book that I'm gonna read in this new house is actually called Adelina's Wales. Okay, you guys can't see. Okay, so this story is about Adelina, who's a main character of the story. Not really. Like, it's a real life story, so it's not like a main character or something. But anyways, so Adelina is the main character of this book. So, um, yeah. He, she, like, kind of, it just tells about stuff of whales and stuff, which I think it's really cool because I learned breaching and flocking and stuff like that, which, uh, if you watch this whole video, you will understand what that is. Or if you already know, then, like, watch this video still. So, anyway, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later after the video is gone. I mean... <laughs> I'm in the book, like, I'm done reading the book. Yay! Adelina's Wales. La Laguna is the name of a quiet, dusty fishing village on the sandy shore of Laguna San Ignacio in Baja, California, Mexico. A few dozen home sites are scattered along the water's edge. These little houses are simply one or two rooms boxed patched together with plywood and sheet metal. Drinking water is stored outside in 50 gallon plastic barrels and electricity is only turned on for only a few hours each day. Adelina Mayor has lived her whole life in La Laguna. She is a bright 10 year old girl she loves the ocean and the feeling of the ever-present wind that blows her long, dark hair into wild tangles. She knows what time of the day it is by looking at the way the light reflects off the water. Adelina can tell what month it is by watching the kind of birds that nest in the mangroves behind her home. She can even recognize when it is low tide simply by taking a deep breath through her nose she can smell the calm seaweed that baked in the hot sun on the shoreline as the water level goes down in late january every afternoon after school adelina walks to the beach to see if her friends the gray whales have returned at the same time every year the whales come traveling as far as alaska and russia they slowly and steadily swim south, covering more than 5,000 miles along the Pacific coast during November, December, and January. One night, Adelina is awoken by a loud, low rumbling noise. It is a sound of a 40-ton gallon whale, gray whale exhaling a room-sized blast of hot, wet air. As she has always known they would, the gray whales have come again to visit. Adelina smiles and returns to her sleep, comforted by the sounds of whales breathing and snoring outside her window. At daybreak, she runs to the ragoon to see two clouds of mist out over the water. The milky trails of breath left by a mother gray whale and her newborn calf. The waters of the protected lagoons are warm and shallow. Scientists who have come to visit and study the whales have explained that Laguna San Ignacio is the perfect place for the mother whales to have their babies and teach them how to swim. But Adelina knows why they really come to visit her. Adelina's family lives far away from the big cities and highways and shopping malls. Her little village does not have any movie theaters or traffic lights, but she knows that her hometown is a special place. This is the only place on earth where those giant gray whales, totally wild animals, choose to seek out touch with of a human hand. 
Only here in Laguna San Ignacio do whales ever stop swimming and say hello to their human neighbors. Raising their massive heads up out of the water, they come face to face with people. Some mother whales even lift their newborn calf up their back to help them get, get a better view of those who have come to see them. Or maybe they're just showing off, sharing their new baby and the way any proud parent would. The whales have been coming to this lagoon for hundreds of years, and Adelina is proud that her grandfather, Pasico, was the first person to tell of a friendly visit with one. She loves to list, hear him tell the story of that whale and that day. She listens closely as he talks about being frightened, since he didn't know then that the whale was only being friendly. He thought he was in big trouble. Adelina looked first at the tight, leathery skin of her grandfather, browned from many years of fishing in the tro bright tropical sun. From his face, she glanced down the small plastic model of a gray whale that he keeps close by. As he began to tell the story of his first friendly whale encounter, though there is a twinkle in his eyes, and a large smile on his face. Adelina and her father Runflo smiles too, listening again to the story that they have heard so many times before. In a whisper, her grandfather begins to draw them in. Adelina closes her eyes to imagine the calm and quiet on that day after in a whisper, her grandfather begins to draw them in. Adelina closes her eyes to imagine the calm and quiet on that first afternoon, when his small boat was gently nudged by a huge gray whale. As the boat rocked, her grandfather and his fishing partner's hearts pounded. They held tight and waited, preparing themselves to be thrown into the water by the giant animal. The whale dove below them and surfaced again on the opposite side of the boat, scraping her head along the smooth sides. Instead of being tossed from the boat, they were surprised to find themselves st still upright and floating. For the next hour, the whale glanced alongside them, bumping and booming gently, as gently as possible for an animal that is as long as a school bus as and as wide as a soccer goal. As the sun started to set behind them, the whale gave out a great blast of wet, snooty salt water that soaked them clothes and stuck to their skin. The whale then rose up inches away from the boat and drove into the sea. Her first visit was over. As her grandfather began Finishes the story, he looks at Adelina, who joins him in speaking the last line of the story. Well, my friend, no fish today, they said before breaking into laughter. After this first friendly visit with the whales, word quickly spread of this unique encounter between a wild 50-foot whale and a tiny fishing boat. Scientists and whale watchers started to come to Laguna San Ignacio to see the whales themselves. Perhaps word spread amongst the whales too, because now dozens of whales began to approach the small boats. With brains as large as a car engine, gray whales might even have their own language. They talk in low rumbles and loud clicks, making noises that sound like tappings of a steel drum or ticking that a playing card makes and it's, as it slaps against the spokes of a turning bicycle wheel. Maybe they told each other that it was safe to visit here. Adelina's favorite time of the day is the late afternoon, when her father and grandfather returns from their trips on the water guiding visitors to see the whales. They sit together as the sun goes down behind them, and she listens to stories of the whales. She asks them lots and lots of questions. Adelina has learned a, a lot about the gray whales. She knows that when a whale leaps out of the water and makes a giant splash falling back in, it's called breathing. 
when a giant and a whale pops its head straight up out of the water as if it's looking around to see what is going on it is called spy hopping adelina also learned how the whale's wide flat tail is called a fluke and when it raises its tail up in the air as it goes down into a deep dive it's called flucking Although her home is a simple one on a sandy bluff hugging the edge of the Pacific Ocean, Adelina has many new friends who come to share her world. She has met people who come from beyond the end of the winding bumpy road that rings the lagoon. Some are famous actors, some are politicians, some speak Spanish, some speak English. Those are that weigh 40 tons speak to their in magical style. The whales have taught her that the world is a big place. Adelina knows that she has many choices in the future. Sometimes she giggles with delight at the idea of being the first captain to panga, a small opening fishing boat, and teach people about the whales in the lagoon. Or sometimes she thinks she may become a biologist who studies the ocean and can one day help to unlock some of the mysteries of the whales in her own backyard. Or maybe she will take pictures like a photographer whom she watches juggling his three cameras as he stumbled aboard the whale watching boat. But no matter what she chooses, the whales will always be a part of her life. For those three months, Adelina knows how lucky she is to live in Laguna San Ignacio, the little corner of Mexico that the gray whales chooses for their winter home. This is a place where those two worlds join together. She wouldn't trade it for anything. In the early spring, the lagoon grows quiet. One by one, the whales swim off, heading north for a summer of feeding on their heads and back, they carry the fingerprints of those they met, the memories of the encounters in Mexico. Maybe as the whales sleep, they dream of the colorful sunset in the Luna San Ignacio. Every afternoon, Adelina continues to gaze across the water. Sometimes now, when, the, when she closes her eyes, she can still see the whales swimming by. And if she listens really closely, she can even hear their breathing. Guys! Okay, guys. Okay, guys. I'm just so excited today. Okay. So reading the book, um, you will know, like, Adelina's wheels and stuff. Honestly, I think it's just a good book, and I like it. But um, the problem with this one is that I just like to do... I just like to read some, like, fun things. But, like, these are, like additional things where it sounds like you're studying and it sounds like you're gonna get a test that is like five million times super harder than the book itself and it's gonna be so hard that you will fail and then stuff like that it just feels like that that's the only thing i feel about this book but i like the fact that like they give you like these extra brain extra words that you can actually learn and use in other purposes in life so i think i like that one a lot and yeah honestly my favorite part of i like this one like it looks like that is that its teeth or is that like its fur wait does whales have fur anyways if you guys want to leave the com like Tell me if whales have furs or not. Comment down below. And if they don't, then also comment down below and like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.